The International Jew is a four-volume set of booklets or pamphlets published and distributed in the early 1920s by Henry Ford, an American industrialist and automobile manufacturer. In spring 1920, Ford made his personal newspaper, The Dearborn Independent, chronicle what he considered the Jewish menace. Every week for 91 issues, the paper exposed some sort of Jewish-inspired evil major story in a headline. The most popular and aggressive stories were then chosen to be reprinted into four volumes called The International Jew. It is to be distinguished from The International Jew, The World's Problem which was the headline in the Dearborn Independent and is the name of a collection of articles serialized in the Dearborn Independent. It is also to be distinguished from the title of the first volume of the series, namely The International Jew, The World's Foremost Problem. Content. After publication in the periodical, the articles were compiled into a four-volume set as follows. Volume 1. The International Jew. The World's Foremost Problem chapters the Jew in character and business. Germany's reaction against the Jew. Jewish history in the United States. The Jewish question, fact or fancy, anti-Semitism, will it appear in the U.S.? Jewish question breaks into the magazines. Arthur Brisbane leaps to the help of Jewry. Does a definite Jewish world program exist? The historic basis of Jewish imperialism. An introduction to the Jewish protocols. Jewish estimate of Gentile human nature. Jewish protocols claim partial fulfillment. Jewish plan to split society by ideas. Did the Jews foresee the world war? Is the Jewish Kahal the modern Soviet? How the Jewish question touches the farm? Does Jewish power control the world press? Does this explain Jewish political power? The all-Jewish mark on Red Russia. Jewish testimony in favor of Bolshevism. Volume 2. Jewish activities in the United States chapters How Jews in the U.S. Conceal their strength. Jewish testimony on a Jews a nation. Jew versus non-Jew in New York finance. The high and low of Jewish money power. Disraeli of America, a Jew of superpower. The scope of Jewish dictatorship in the U.S. Jewish copper kings reap rich war profits. Jewish control of the American theater. The rise of the first Jewish theatrical trust. How Jews capitalized the protest against Jews. The Jewish aspect of the movie problem. Jewish supremacy in motion picture world. Rule of the Jewish Kehler grips New York. The Jewish demand for rights in America. Jewish rights clash with American rights. Jewish rights to put studies out of schools. Disraeli, British premier, portrays the Jews. Taft once tried to resist Jews and failed. When editors were independent of the Jews, why the Jews dislike the Morgenthau Report. Jews use the peace conference to bind Poland. Volume 3. Jewish influence in American life chapters the Jews and the religious persecution cry. Are the Jews victims or persecutors? Jewish gamblers corrupt American baseball. Jewish degradation of American baseball. Jewish jazz becomes our national music. How the Jewish Song Trust makes you sing. Jewish hotbeds of Bolshevism in the U.S. Jew trades link with world revolutionaries. Will Jewish Zionism bring Armageddon? How the Jews use power by an eyewitness. How Jews ruled and ruined Tammany Hall. Jew wires direct Tammany's Gentile puppets. Benai B. Ruth Leader discusses the Jews. Dr. Levy, a Jew, admits his people's error. Jewish idea in American monetary affairs. Jewish idea molded Federal Reserve plan. Jewish idea of Central Bank for America. How Jewish international finance functions. Jewish Power and America's Money Famine, Volume 4, Aspects of Jewish Power in the United States Chapters How Jews Gained American Liquor Control, Gigantic Jewish Liquor Trust and Its Career, The Jewish Element in Bootlegging Evil, Angles of Jewish Influence in American Life, The Jews' Complaint Against Americanism, The Jewish Associates of Benedict Arnold, Benedict Arnold and Jewish Aid in Shady Deal, Arnold and his Jewish Aids at West Point, 
the gentle art of changing Jewish names, Jewish, Kol Nidri, and Eli, Eli, explained. Jews as New York magistrates see them. Jews are silent, the national voice is heard. What Jews attempted when they had power, the Jewish question in current testimony. America's Jewish Enigma, Lewis Marshall. The economic plans of international Jews. A Jew sees his people as others see them. Candid address to Jews on the Jewish problem. An address to Gentiles on the Jewish problem. 1927 libel suit. A libel lawsuit brought by San Francisco lawyer and Jewish farm cooperative organizer Aaron Sapiro in response to anti-Semitic remarks led Ford to close The Independent in December 1927. News reports at the time quoted him as being shocked by the content and having been unaware of its nature. During the trial, the editor of Ford's own page, William John Cameron, testified that Ford's had nothing to do with the editorials even though they were under his byline. Cameron testified at the libel trial that he never discussed the content of the pages nor sent him to Ford for his approval, though investigative journalist Max Wallace doubted the veracity of this claim and wrote that James M. Miller, a former Dearborn Independent employee, swore under oath that Ford had told him he intended to expose Sapiro. According to Michael Barcoon, that Cameron would have continued to publish such controversial material without Ford's explicit instructions seemed unthinkable to those who knew. Both men, Mrs. Stanley Ruddyman, a Ford family intimate, remarks that, I don't think Mr. Cameron ever wrote anything for publication without Mr. Ford's approval. The Patriotic Publishing Co. In 1934, the Patriotic Publishing Co., an unincorporated entity that operated out of a post office box, issued and compiled and edited the protocols as an expanded 300-page tome. The expansion from less than 100 pages to 300 pages was made possible by copying substantial sections from the Dearborn Independent. Most of the later imprints of the protocols are derived from this 1934 edition. George F. Green and the Christian Nationalist Crusade. In June 1949 there appeared a 174-page one-volume abridgment of the text titled The International Jew, subtitled The World's Foremost Problem, and edited by George F. Green. It was published by Green, editor of the Independent Nationalist with the address at 56 Gloucester Road, New Barnet, Hertfordshire, England. The book was also sold in the United States, where it was distributed by the Christian Nationalist Crusade.